have worked at Care San Francisco since 2009. When I joined back then, um, there were just two of us. Um, I believe our board was less than 10 people. Today, we have a board of over a dozen people from across the region and a staff of nearly 20, all committed to the mission to protect and empower the Muslim community. I, I love working for CARE and, and particularly in our legal services because it is so unique. There are a lot of legal service providers here in the, in the San Francisco Bay Area, especially in the immigration field, but many of them are very limited in what, what they will do and what services they can provide. But we, because we are community funded primarily, are able to help those most at risk. We have an incredible immigration clinic here and I have personally referred so many clients who reach out to me and I do it with confidence. Most agencies that you're referring to, it's like that person gets lost, you know, in that agency. But with this care office, I know we have, you know, phenomenal attorneys. We have the opportunity to work together to really build a region that we can celebrate. We have graduated dozens of youth through our leadership training programs. We also run a really big program in the summertime, which I love and I'm the direct uh, organizer for, which is the Muslim Game Changers Network. And that's a, you know, a 10 week long program designed to aim or, or aim to um, provide political education um, and education about social justice. Oh, a large part of our work, other than direct representation, is also going to the community and doing Know Your Rights presentations at the various mosques so that when community members are faced with such situations, they might, they know, they are armed with the knowledge about what to do and also what not to do. In this country, one of the most important things you can do is be civically engaged. That a lot of the change that affects you in a real visceral way is occurring at the local level. If we take a step back, we, we can see how much our role in society has changed, especially over the last 20 years, we aren't going anywhere. That inshallah, the Muslim community in, in this society, in this country is only gonna to continue to grow and thrive. We need to support our organizations that are working not only on, on the now, but also on the future. And the best way to figure that out is to be in the front lines. That's the best, you know, exposure to like get into like, am I resilient enough to like, you know, not only like support a community, but like be there in the best way possible for them. Care only exists because our community is responding to us, because they seek our help. You must not be complacent. If you are complacent and think that life and the policies that are being perpetuated in your community are not affecting you, it is exactly that attitude that's gonna to lead to a greater oppression of communities that are historically underserved. With that population of 300,000 Muslims to 500,000 Muslims, you might only hear the case that broke the news, but there are hundreds of cases that this office deals with on a daily basis. But that's only possible because of donors. That's only possible because of volunteers. They provide services to the ones who need it the most. Uh, they provide it, those same services for free, at no cost, because of those donors. We have so much support from all types of businesses, people in the community, whether they're giving like, you know, $5, whether they're giving like, you know, thousands of dollars, people keep coming back to care for the same reason to, because they see the important work that we're doing. You know, we have Silicon Valley is, has a vast array of corporations and, and you know, major tech companies. And, and something we'd really like to tap into is getting those corporate sponsors. In 2015, then candidate Donald Trump first introduced the idea of a Muslim ban. He immediately barred people from Iraq, Iran, Syria, Somalia, Libya, Sudan, and Yemen. No consideration for their circumstances, no consideration for the impact on families here. It was just chaos. We filed a lawsuit at that time, but there was something incredibly redeeming about the court finding in our favor. But more than that, about staying the course for this many years on this issue. This work that we're doing is years long work. It's generational work. And big wins, when they come, we celebrate them because they are a testament to our team's hard work. They're a testament to our donors' commitment to helping us doing that hard work. But more than anything, they're a testament to our community's trust that we have their back and that when we fight, we win.